All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast. And for the second segment of today's show, we're going to talk about Shohei Otani and the recent news around him. So um, over the weekend, uh, it was reported that Otani cleared out his locker and uh, it came out that he is going to miss the rest of the season with his oblique injury. And also... I was reading how uh, they want to try to, you know, get that UCL surgery as soon as possible. So, you know, so then he can, you know, get back to pitching sooner, even though um, most likely, I don't, I mean, we'll see what happens, but it's probably, he's probably not pitching next year. Um, But I saw that it's a different kind of UCL injury than he had. And it's in a different uh, spot. uh, I saw, um, uh, as opposed to the last time he dealt with this injury. So um, uh, I think the Angels were saying that uh, Tommy John surgery might not happen. There might be a different procedure that's done with that. So um, I guess, you know, that's, I mean, I guess that's kind of good news, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, you're still, it's still really bad because he's probably not going to pitch next year. But, um, but yeah, when I, because uh, my one of my friends, I think, sent the... Uh, you know, the article, like a tweet about it in the, in the, uh, in our sports group chat. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it stinks. It, it really stinks. I mean, it, but all we saw was he cleared out his locker and it just, I mean, obviously, you know, they're going to shut him down for the rest of the year, but it's just like a very like sour way, uh, you know, for the, for his angel, angels tenure to end, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't think he's coming back. He's going to go somewhere else. And whether it's going to be on the West Coast with a new team or does he come East remains to be seen. But it's just a very, it's a very sour way to end the, excuse me, to end the season for Otani. And um, yeah, I just, uh, you know, he was having a great season, you know, uh, pitching and hitting wise. He was, he was really doing great. And, um, you know, it just, um, it just ended like on such a bad note because I mean, he was on pace to maybe break judges home run record. You know, it, it looked like that was going to happen and you know, injuries caught up to him and that was, uh, that was basically it, you know, and uh, now he's out for the year. So Otani on the season, uh, he finishes in 23 games. He finishes with a 10 and five record, a 3.14 ERA, um, 132 innings pitched, 167 strikeouts, and a 1.06 whip. And then you go to his hitting stats. I mean, 300 hitter, 44 home runs, 95 RBIs, 20 stolen bases, and a 1066 OPS. And, you know, comparing that to his, you know, other seasons, last year he hit 34 home runs. So he had 10 more home runs this year, had the same amount of RBIs. His walks went up. Uh, strikeouts were down, the batting average was up, OPS was up, on base percentage was up, slugging was up. I mean, he had a great. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna win MVP. He's gonna he's still gonna win MVP. Cause you look at, I mean, his home runs. He's surrounded by National League hitters. Uh, you got Matt Olson, you got Alonzo, Schwarber, Betts, Acuna, Austin Riley, Soler, Muncie, Ozuna. You know that, that's that's for home runs. Then you look at you look at RBIs. Uh, you have Olsen, Alonzo, uh, Kyle Tucker, Adolis Garcia, Mookie Betts, Muncy, Julio Rodriguez. But I, I mean, I, I don't think. I mean, these guys, these guys aren't going to win MVP over Otani. Uh, I don't. I don't think. Well, let's look at Kyle Tucker. So Kyle Tucker's got a one one hundred five RBI. He's got twenty seven home runs, eight seventy three OPS. I mean, he's having a very good season. Uh, but I mean, Otani. Otani's going to win MVP. Um. It's just it just stinks, and it really just makes you wonder where is he going to end up, you know? Because I I talked about this uh, in a show a couple weeks ago, is you know it's because when he first came over, he wanted to play on the West Coast because he wanted to be closer to where where he's from, he wanted to be closer to Japan, and I mean things could change. He might you know say hey listen I want to go to you know wherever whatever's going to give me the best chance to win now 
there's a lot of there, there's teams on the West Coast that can do that. The Dodgers, because the Dodgers are definitely going to be a player in in all of this because they they got rid of a bunch of guys. They got rid of Justin Turner, uh, you know Trey Turner. They got rid of Bellinger. They got rid of they let go of a lot of guys to open up payroll for Otani and and that's going to be that might be the favorite. But also like the Mariners, they they were gaining some uh, some traction in this. So I I'm I'm curious to see what ends up happening. I mean, I, I don't I don't I mean the Mets, listen, the Mets have the money to do it. I don't think the Yankees are a player. I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, I would be I would be over the moon if it happens, but it's, you know, I I think right now they're in a position where they can't they can't really do that because of Giancarlo Stanton, him, you know, being landlocked at DH. You got a lot of, you know, you got a lot of outfielders. You got, uh, well, Otani doesn't play the field, but I'm just saying it's just, uh, and starting pitching. I mean, we we need the Yankees need a starter, and Otani is not going to pitch, so it's it's really just the DH spot that's a problem with the Yankees, which is why I don't think it's going to end up happening unless the Yankees move off of Stanton if they're able to and they somehow sign him. But I I, I don't I think. You know, with their recent track record, I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna happen, and you know, but uh, the Mets, I think the Mets, he's got a better chance of going to the Mets than he does to the Yankees, because um, uh, Steve Cohen doesn't care about the luxury tax and whatnot. If he can get Otani, he's gonna try to go out and get him. Um, you know, the Mets they brought on David Stearns over from the Brewers. You know, so Billy Epp- so so he's the president of of, uh, of baseball operations, and then you have so Epler's still, I guess, going to be the general manager. It seems I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Billy Epler's got to answer to him, I think, if Billy Epler's the G- the guy at GM. But um, it's it's going to be it's it's going to be interesting. It, it just it's it's unfortunate because you know, like I I talked about they they had a they were like five games over. Um. You know when they announced they weren't gonna trade Otani, and and then uh, everything just kind of fell apart. Uh, you know Otani throws that complete game shutout and he hits two home runs and that double header and the Angels they're like we're gonna buy and they you know they got these players they got Giolito, Gritchick, C.J. Crone, and then it just fell apart. Mike Trout comes back for literally one game and then he's gone and then Otani gets hurt, hurts his oblique, and now he's now he's out for the year. Now, did the Angels make the right call uh, in terms of, like, I guess, shutting him down? I guess. You know, because you're not playing for anything and you don't want to get him hurt even more. But the other thing is, I mean, he's not going to come back. I would be I would be surprised if he comes back as an Angel. Unless the Angels offer him a contract that he cannot refuse. Even then, it's like, what, but why do you want to stay there? I, Mike Trout and Otani at one point were the two best players in baseball. And the Angels have done nothing. Nothing with these two guys. They haven't accomplished anything. So, I, I mean, Otani's going to... Otani, I think, go somewhere else. Go to the Dodgers. Go to the Mariners. The Mariners are an up-and-coming team the last couple of years. Um... I think that's where you got to go. The Mets, uh, you know, the Mets, can the Mets turn it around? I, I, with the resources that they have, they can definitely do that. Now, the problem, I, well, listen, would you rather have Vogelbach DHing again? Or would you rather have, I don't even know, Vogelbach probably really hasn't even played because they have all the young guys up. But would you rather have Otani as your DH or somebody else? So the Mets, if they can go out and get him, and on top of that, if Otani does come back and pitch, that adds to their the Mets rotation. I mean, it's the same. Look, listen, it's the same thing for anybody, even the Yankees. But I think the I think the Mets have a better the Mets are uh, got a better shot at getting Otani than, like I said, the Yankees do. So if if I'm the Mets, I, I listen. The Mets need the Mets need a couple bats. To improve this lineup, and Otani is a guy that, you know, could definitely solve a lot of those issues. So we'll put it like that. But it's just uh, it just stinks for baseball because you, you really wanted to see what he was going to do. Like, was he going to get to sixty? Um, 
By the way, Matt Olson, he hit his 52nd home run, so happy about that because I know I made that mistake and put him hitting 52 when he hit 51. I don't know why that happened, but it did. So, um, but, you know, Otani, he was, listen, he was on pace to hit 60. It was, it was getting, it was going to get there and, uh, injuries just kind of derailed that. And, and it sucks to see because he would have had that coverage that, you know, judge was having when he was, you know, chasing, you know, 62 Roger Maris's number, you know? So I, and I, and I think Otani probably would have gotten to at least 60, but I mean, we'll never know. I listen, he comes back and, and he's, you know, playing as a DH next year and we'll see what he does, you know, a full healthy season. Well, as a hitter, not as a pitcher, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it remains to be seen, but it, uh, you know, it just really is, uh, unfortunate that this had to, this had to occur. I mean, I, I think for everybody, I think most people are happy that, except for Angel fans, uh, most people are happy that. Otani's gonna not be an angel next year and be somewhere else that you know has a chance to win. And you're kind of, and I'm kind of hoping the same thing for Mike Trout. I think Mike Trout's gotta go somewhere else. You know, whether it's trade, get him go. You know, trade him somewhere where he could, you know, try to play in the playoffs again. Because again, the last time he played was ten years ago, almost 2014, which is wild. It's wild. One. One time, one time that he played in the postseason, and it was ten. And it was almost ten years ago. Yeah, it was a, it was a different time back then for many different reasons, not just from a baseball or sports standpoint, but just from like a like a life standpoint. Just the, you know, it was a very it was a very different world back then. Um, I was in, I was in freshman year of high school. Or eighth grade, it was one of the two. It's just, it was a, uh, it was a time. Actually, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I think it was ninth grade. I was in ninth grade. That's wild. But yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what else to say. It's just, a, it's a bad situation. The Angels, they could have got a haul for this guy if they traded him, and instead of losing him for nothing. But they, they wanted to. They wanted to contend, compete, and it just like once they made all those trades, that's when everything just fell apart. Like they, they like I said, they had they were over five hundred, and um, and everything just fell apart after that. And then they they put a lot of these guys on waivers. I don't think I don't think yeah, Gritchick didn't get claimed, but. I, it's just that was a, that was a disaster, and I think uh, like in the coming weeks, um, I definitely will go through what the Angels have done over the last ten years or so, like go through moves and, and kind of like what I did with like Heim Bloom's tenure with the Red Sox, and just kind of evaluating all that because there is a lot, there is a lot of bad deals in there. You know they gave, and most recently they gave Rendon a big contract, and he had, you know, World Series champ with the Nationals, and he he just he, he's been awful, he's been terrible. But it's just uh, it stinks because you really because you really want to see Trout and Otani in the playoffs, and you're gonna have to wait another year for that. So, yeah, it's just uh, it sucks. It sucks for baseball. It really does. You know, injury and, and for all sports, injuries are just they really are just terrible you wish injuries didn't exist i mean football just started we're in week two and there's so many injuries it's just but it, that's it's part of the game it's part of the game so yeah that's uh that's basically it with the uh otani segment um so you know again i'll touch upon it in the patreon uh, video as well uh when i record that and that's coming up so uh you know make sure if you're if you Subscribe to the Patreon. You will tune in and hear some more uh, more thoughts on that. So with that, we are going to take our second break of the show. And then when we come back, I am going to go over the scores from this past weekend, game recaps from this weekend, and give my thoughts on that. And then, uh, and then that will bring us into the final segment, which will be talking about the playoff race. So stick around, and we will be right back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast. 